Ladies and gentlemen, broadcasting live from Munich, this is the Burton Hub Show, featuring tonight's special guests, Donna Carpenter and Kelly Clark. Give it up for your host, Matt Barr. How's it all going? That's, that's my new ringtone, I think, from now on. Um, so yeah, I'm very, very happy to welcome everyone to the Burton Hub Show, live here from the Burton Hub in Munich. Uh, my name is Matt Barr. Really pleased that Burton have invited me to do this tonight, especially because I've got two of the most uh, influential and impressive women in snowboarding to speak to, Donna and Kelly, you can see them from here. Um, but before I get started, I just want to explain a little bit about who I am. Um, so my name is Matt, uh, I'm a snowboard journalist. I've been writing about action sports now for 20 years. Um, so I've been doing this a little, little while. Uh, I run my agency, All Conditions Media. Um, I run a podcast called Looking Sideways, in which I try and uncover the most fascinating stories in action sports and other related, related endeavors. That's me with uh, Rob Machado from recently. Um, so yeah, that's me. And tonight what we're gonna do is I'm gonna speak to Donna and Kelly for about half an hour. Um, we're live on Facebook as well. I think it's that camera there. Hello. Um, so even though we're doing it in front of a live studio audience, we've got quite a few thousand people joining us on the live stream. Um, good news for you guys, actually. We're giving away this snowboard, which is the Burton Rise collaboration that Kelly and Donna have worked on um, to mark the next chapter in Kelly's career, which we're going to talk about tonight. We're giving that away in the raffle tonight. All you need to do to win that board is comment on the live stream. That's it, basically. If you comment on the live stream, uh, you're in the raffle. So you might win that board. It's only one of 50 in the world, I believe. Uh, one of the most sustainable snowboards Burton have ever made. So yeah, to be in with a chance of winning it, um, leave us a comment, keep it clean, though. That's, that's my only request. <laughs> uh, um, so yeah, that's it, really. I'll bring up my first guest. It's that cliche, she needs no introduction, but um, I'm going to bring her out anyway. It's Donna Carpenter, everyone. Yeah. How you doing? Thank you. You're right. Um, so Donna, as we know, she's uh, she's a visionary. She's been part of Burton since '81, is it? I believe. Yeah, since when I was six. Since when you were six? Yeah, of course, yeah. when I was six years old. That makeup artist Ooh. is good. Um, <laughs> so, and you've done everything with Burton from from day one, right? You've been basically you've worked and you've answered the phone, you've packed the boards. You moved over here in the eighties to help set up Burton Europe, right? You know what? We never thought it would be as scary. So when we started, it was to be done in your backyard, back hill. We had a rope on the end, we had a wood wood board, and Jake thought in the mid 80s, right. I think there's a way to make this like a ski with fiberglass and steel edges. And I said, oh my God, I've just moved from New York to Vermont. Right. What am I doing? Yeah, to follow this <laughs> and guy. And he said, let's go to it's Europe. Be he massive. said, I was like, okay, much better. Yeah. Let's go to Europe. Well, I can see Kelly's looking at a watch out there. And so. Kelly's <laughs> like, excuse me, um, it's about Kelly. So before I introduce <laughs> Kelly, I just want to read, I want to read the stats because obviously one, uh. of the one of the main reasons we're here tonight is because Kelly's moving on to the next stage of her career. And when I was researching this, I was a bit like, you know what, it needs reading out, like 20 years, 200 events, 137 podiums, 78 wins, six X Games medals, eight US Open half pipes, two bronze, one, one gold medal. Um, it's why she's the most successful competitive snowboarder ever. The winningest snowboarder in the history of the sport, male or female. Up you come, Kelly. it feel like someone, someone's talking about somebody else when you hear that <laughs> intro? Like uh, yeah, that? It's, um, it's pretty incredible until we worked on this project. Started reflecting on my career. I didn't, I didn't really get my head around those numbers until recently, so it's, it's, it's been quite, an incredible it's quite a journey. List. It's quite a list. Um, well, it's the headline news. I think we're going to show the film that Burton have put together to kind of mark, mark this period. So should we, should we whack it on? Yeah. You'll never be perfect. No intention, no intention. 20 years. 20 years. I had no idea. No idea where it would take me.
To do what I do requires all of me, all of my heart, and all of my mind. Kelly Clark, another gold medal. It's never been about keeping up with others, but about setting the pace. It's about the snowboarding. Women's snowboarding reaches a new height. For 20 years, competition has been the place to push myself, to see what I'm capable of and what's possible. I never thought that I could make a career out of snowboarding. Ladies and gentlemen, your SP champion. That changed when it became an Olympic sport. I knew then, at the age of 14, that this was the dream that I wanted to spend my life pursuing. At the time, I had no idea where it would take me. Okay, Kelly, you're on the camera. Sports have a way of teaching life's principles in a simple and beautiful way. I did all my growing up and learning about life through snowboarding. It's taught me how to define success, deal with failure, and develop a strong sense of self. Oh my God, wow. riding away from that. Ellie Clark, you are a warrior. I've learned to live and thrive in a performance culture, but not be defined by it. I'm proud and thankful for where I've been and what I've achieved. If it was about winning, I would have stopped a long time ago. Well, Clark. In snowboarding, no matter what you accomplish, you'll never be perfect. You could always go a little bigger, grab a little longer, land a little cleaner. The possibility of what could be pushed me to try and fail and try again. I've learned that true greatness is an inside job and that it's entirely possible you may be the only one who truly understands the depth of your victories. After 20 years, nearly 200 events, 137 podiums, 78 wins, and more pipe laps than I can count. I feel that at last I found my own personal ceiling and it's time to let others stand on it. Just like I stood on the ceiling of the generation before me, the next generation will take half-pipe snowboarding further than I ever could. Today, I step away from competitive riding, knowing that women's snowboarding is alive and well and in good hands. I've always been a snowboarder and I have no intention of stopping. Just because I won't be competing doesn't mean I won't be riding. Less time in a jersey just means more time to explore what else snowboarding has to offer. Snowboarding has taught me so much, especially that life is better with friends. Trisha, Tora, Hannah, Gretchen, Elena, Anne, Shannon, Chloe. These women have made me a better snowboarder than I ever imagined. Thank you for the inspiration and thank you for the friendship. I always wanted snowboarding to be better because I was a part of it. I believe that's true, and I plan on doing whatever I can to continue to contribute to the sport and lifestyle that's given me so much. Along with Donna Carpenter, I'll be focusing my energy on developing sustainable products for Burton, inspiring others from the things that I've learned from my years competing, and of course, I'll keep riding. I like to think that I'm just getting started. I say goodbye to the bib, but cheers to friends, cheers to the future, and cheers to snowboarding.
I mean, it's interesting what you were saying because one of the quotes from the film is you, you said, like, true greatness is an inside job and it's entirely possible that you may be the only one that actually understands what it, what it takes, you know? Is that, is that kind of hinting at the, the depths that you have to, to, to go to to sustain that career? Because as you say, it's, it's such a long career, you know, to stay at the top for that long. Very unusual for Very an unusual. athlete to have a 20-year career. Yeah, I mean, I and never thought... Kelly's going to be very humble about it, but I think at some point she started thinking about what she could give to the sport as much as what... I mean, you described that to me as the yeah. secret to your longevity. Yeah, mm -hmm. very much so. I think... Um, you know, whether you're a competitive snowboarder or not, I think we all find ourselves living in a performance culture. Um, we're measuring ourselves against yeah, our peers. Higher. And, um, you know, mine was very, very public performance culture every weekend, every Saturday. Um, and I think it's so easy to be motivated by external things. And I found in order to have a, a really enjoyable sustainable career I really had to figure out how to be internally motivated yeah my that's what I was kind of getting at like my how you progress inner world that. yeah um really Not became easy. more important than my external world I, I I celebrated the successes that that no one saw more than the successes that were on tv for millions of people to see and um, I never like I, I love competition as you as you gather more than most people um <laughs> and but I wouldn't call myself a competitive person I have really high standards but I never wanted to I never wanted to snowboard because it was an Olympic year or an X Games final I never wanted to push myself based off of what was going on around me I really wanted to be the one that was in the driver's seat kind of navigating that and so you know competition was an opportunity to see what I built it was an opportunity to, to see um, what I was capable of but it never defined me. And so even as I kind of take this transition, um, I love snowboarding that there's, there's a whole other world beyond competition because for me, it's always been about that. It's never been about the destination or the performance aspect of it. Um, and that's, that was really something that, you know, didn't only allow me to be successful, it, it allowed me to enjoy it. And I mean, snowboarding is, it's fun. Uh, it's fun. It's enjoyable. <laughs> it's, um, so in, in the midst of competition, that was something that was extremely important to me. Um, and I can see that play out in different ways throughout my entire career where, you know, I would have some of my biggest moments in Olympic finals um, were some of my greatest victories. And it wasn't my best snowboarding. I wasn't even the best snowboarder that day. But for me, what I personally overcame was far more valuable than what everybody wants to measure my success by. My success wasn't wasn't measured by what color medal I got or didn't get, for that matter. Did that evolve as your career progressed, or did you always have? Did you have that understanding from the beginning? Um, I would say in 2010, um, after my third Olympics, I really came to the conclusion that I wanted to be intentional. Right. Um, and I, I saw my peers, I saw people, I saw the sport uh, progress. You know, during an Olympic season, and I was like. I don't know if that's why I want to be doing this. And that's when I started the work on my 1080. And um, I learned that in 2011. It was a non-Olympic non year. And I remember that event. I did it I did it in a victory lap. It was lap. a non-crucial yeah. moment. I, had I already remember it like it was yesterday. And it was the X Games. She had already won. I think it was her fifth X Games gold. And we were all like... We heard Kelly did the 1080 and practice, and you got to understand that men were just doing that two years before. This was like, you know, oh, my God, there's going to be a woman doing a 1080. But I was like, she should just take a victory lap. <laughs> she should just... Take the pressure off. <laughs> she should just yeah. sting. But typical Kelly. Yeah, so Touchy. I basically was just kind of evaluating Reevaluating, re yeah. And... I ask myself these two questions, you know, am I done progressing? Have I hit my potential? Yeah. Um, and is is the world around me and the women's snowboarding specifically, you know, have I have I given everything? Am, am, am I, do I have anything left to contribute? You know, those were the two questions that I asked myself. And yeah. I, in 2014, I was like, I, I don't believe I've hit my potential. Right. And I feel like I have more to contribute. Um, fast forward four years. Um, 
this was my fifth Winter Olympic team that I made, and I got done the season, and and I looked around, and I, I realized that I finally, I, I referenced it in the video, I I found my ceiling. I've I've hit my personal potential. Yeah. Um, could I continue to snowboard in a competitive way? Probably. Um, would I continue to grow and learn? I don't think so. Um, and have I given everything I possibly can to see the women around me succeed? Yeah. And is snowboarding better because I was a part of it? Yeah. That both those questions got answered this year, and so that's why I'm deciding to step away from competitive riding. I think. I think any time you're in a leadership role, you want the environment around you to be healthy when you are no longer there. And I think if a few years ago, if I stepped back, um, I think there would have been a hole in in the sport. And right now, I can step back and um, you know it's in good hands. It's in good hands. Yeah. There's there's not a hole. Those those women that are that we're seeing today, you know, the, the, some of the girls I just mentioned, they're. They're going to be better snowboarders than I ever could be, and they're going to take snowboarding further than I ever could. And, and I just wanted to set them up to be successful. And, and the beautiful thing about snowboarding is, you know, there, this is an evolution of my career. Um, I think when I came to Donna this summer and I told her, hey, I, I'm, I'm ready to, to put a bow on it and call it a, call it a career, um, you know, retirement has such a negative connotation to it. And she said, hey, let's throw a party. Let's celebrate. <laughs> let's let's make a twenty year archive video. Let's design a snowboard. You know, there's such a there's so much more to snowboarding than just com competing. And so, that's just kind of where I'm at right now. And um, it's been awesome. And I'm excited that there's such a lifestyle and community beyond competition to continue to be involved in. Uh, and you've presumably going to have more time to work on your foundation because you've got the Kelly Clark Foundation, which is you know similar project. Gives you an opportunity to give something back. Yeah, I think that came out of the same heart as as Chill. Um, yeah, you just if your dream only includes you, it's just too small of a dream, you know. I think you told me at one point that after you won the gold medal, you thought, and you were only eighteen years old, and you were from just a, a small town in Vermont. And you thought, okay, that equals fame, fortune, the best boyfriend. It's all going to be easy from here. And it wasn't. And so when you decided to think, all right, I got to stop thinking about. And I, I do the same thing. Stop thinking about what I can get from this sport and this thing. And what can I give? What can I give to make it a better community? What can I give to make it a better sport? What can I give to make it a better tribe? Yeah, it's, it's so easy to build something that revolves around you, um, is dependent oh, on you. So boring, though. And, <laughs> it, you know, you're the self-proclaimed center of the universe. I think, that, I think that happens to a lot of us pretty easily. And I, I know with my foundation and, and with my heart to give back to the community and, and even the women that I compete with, um, you just have Especially to build something. Especially the women you compete with. I think that's unusual, and we don't realize that, mm. right? I mean, she mentored Chloe Kim. She called us when Chloe was nine years old and said, this girl is the girl to watch, and I'm going to take her under my wing and... I mean, that doesn't happen in other sports. Yeah, that's the beauty of snowboarding, you know, and, and you just have to build something that outlasts your ability to perform, you know, and I think even in this transition that I'm in now. Um, She's so old. Yeah, such a <laughs> transition. People are like, you're she retiring. Like, you're I'm 35. Are you kidding me? <laughs> new chapter. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's an it evolution of my career. It's a new chapter. Yeah. Um, yeah, and you just... I built some. I feel like I built something that outlasted my ability to perform. And now that I won't be performing anymore, I know I'm going to be just fine because <laughs> it wasn't about me. It wasn't about me Although being. Although I a watched her at the end, she was fighting pretty <laughs> hard. <laughs> you were always like, "I'm going to go like into the night." She's like, <laughs> <laughs> "You're a competitor at heart." Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have done it, done it for so long um, if I didn't care about it. How did your last run feel, like your last competitive run? Because that was only a few weeks oh, ago, I was, right? I was n so nervous. Yeah, you that know? must have been like, you know, you must have <laughs> recognized what a big moment that was. And, yeah. Um, um, it must have been hard not to be emotional, right? It was very emotional. Yeah. Um, 
that weekend was something that I'll remember th- for the rest of my life. Yeah. Um, now there's the emotion now. I can hear it in my voice. Um, I hadn't ridden pipe in actually since the Open last year, and so I, I uh, you know, was making this announcement, and ESPN uh, had gotten in touch with us and said, hey, how can we, once I declined my invite to X Games, they were like, what's going on? <laughs> I was like, well, this is kind of where I'm heading. And they said, hey, how can we support you in that? And um, they invited me to do one last run at the X Games. And the whole thing was really redemptive for me. At the last at the last X Games last year, I actually crashed out and broke the top of my tibia right before the Olympics. And I remember thinking, oh, this is my last time at the X Games. And so this, this was an incredible redemptive moment for me to get back and actually just um, – yeah, get to get to kind of go out uh, on my own terms, and um, I didn't realize how far stretching just being a simple snowboarder could be. I remember during the practice for the finals, right before my last run, one of the cameramen he put his camera down at the top of the pipe, and he said, "Hey, Kelly, before uh. before." everything gets really busy. I just want to thank you for letting me film you for the last 20 years. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> don't, I was, I don't, was holding it together. Why did you say that? <laughs> yeah, and it's just moments like that yeah. where you don't realize the impact you have on someone's life. And um, I got to just celebrate the people who invested in me and um, I didn't fall. That was wonderful. Nice. Yeah, um, that's important. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was a huge honor. I was really grateful. Yeah, amazing. Um, well, one of the other things we wanted to talk about that we've been discussing a bit is the issue of gender equality because it's something that you guys, have, especially you, Donna, have really focused on throughout your career. Um, kind of interested in what it was like for you at the beginning of, of your career, which, as we said earlier, was kind of like, you know, early to mid eighties, really, wasn't it? So, what was it? What was it like then? Was it a, was it a boys' club? Yeah, was it a boys' no, culture? Yeah, no, it wasn't a boys' club, and it wasn't a boys' culture. It was very much men and women pioneering the sport together. And then I think, uh, and we started offering equal prize money at the U.S. Open thirty-seven years ago. Yeah, I mean, looks pretty thirty-seven progressive. years ago. We we're like. Yeah. If you're stupid enough to go down that course, we'll pay you this <laughs> 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 money. <laughs> um, so what happened really was that as we grew, we took on participants and employees from surf, skate, ski. We sort of took on this male domination, dominated culture that we really had to proactively work against, but... I think in terms of the athletes, there was never a moment where you felt less than. You were always a global team rider. We always had global athletes. We were always as committed. I think what I realized was we had to catch up in terms of executive leadership. Okay, that's interesting. Um, so, which we did. We're now, we went from less than 10% of our leadership to over 45 of our leadership are women. Um, and you put programs in place to, to facilitate yeah, this, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not like, oh, I wish it would happen. Yeah. It'll happen. No, you've got to really be proactive especially about recruiting women because everybody who wanted to work for Burton were men and we had to really be proactive about recruiting. So you've just worked on a new film which kind of showcases the new approach with uh, Sharit. Should we look at that? Stand with us? Yeah, so we had something called Burton Girls, which I think at the time was great for us to really separate sort of women's interests in snowboarding, but now it's really as Burton. So you've got rid of the category, basically, the yeah. Burton girls. Yeah. yeah. Chris, So can we see it. that? From our focus on women who inspire us, to leading the industry in sustainability, to speaking up for what we believe in, we stand for more than snowboarding. Stand with us.
going to do questions from the floor, um, which these guys are going to going to choose. So if you've got questions, maybe start thinking about that. And then we're going to do. It's got to be a nice one, and we don't choose you. Um, <laughs> yeah, look out. Um, and then we're going to do some questions from social. Um, we've had someone on Instagram and Facebook today. Um, but I guess you know the interesting thing I wanted to find out before that is like. What what is next? You know, you've been doing some. Obviously, we've seen the board. We've talked about the snowboarding, but you've been doing some of the really interesting projects. You've written a book, um, which is you know, huge undertaking, really. Yeah, here it is. Because um, we were talking about that last night. Um, yeah. Because you suffer from dyslexia, right? So it's a huge, huge. Yeah, this was writing a book. Think yeah. about it, people. A lot of people, my. Uh, one of my friends back home would always say when I was in the process of writing this, you know, there's a lot of reasons why people don't write a book, and it's because it's <laughs> really, really hard. <laughs> and, so it uh, takes a long time. Yeah, it took me about two and a half years. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it was cool. You know, I think I think people will say it's it's really, they feel kind of vulnerable when they write a book. Um, and for me, I actually felt almost like liberated. I feel like there's an idea um, of who I am uh, living my life in the public spotlight as a competitor as a woman as an athlete whatever that may be um and this was a really cool vehicle for me to really put my life on display in a unique way that I had never done and I set out to define success in a healthy way um you know a lot of the concepts I, I referenced tonight are this this book's a really deep dive into that um and so it was a really really fun project and and for me I, I hope there's more projects like this for me in the future um, but I basically have brain, I have my, I always say I have my brain back and my heart back. It's been, um, competitive snowboarding, <laughs> all consuming for the last 20 years. And I kind of have the opportunity to see what I enjoy, to see what I like. I'll continue on with Burton, um, and do much of the same things that I've done for a long time, whether that's working with product managers, um, being available for photo shoots, uh, you know, going to bald face and riding powder with my heroes <laughs> if I have to. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm gonna see where it takes me. I, I'm. I think the it, there's nothing but opportunity for me now. And um, I, I think that's the beautiful thing about snowboarding. I mean, I'm sorry, but when Lindsey Vaughn retired, done and done. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> snowboarding you can reinvent yourself i mean i remember right after the last olympics we went snowboarding and i said all the guys were like kelly you should you should be filming backcountry you're like unbelievable so i think snowboarding allows you to be creative and an individual and it's not dictated by, okay, th this is the end of your competitive career. I mean, it's not easy because she's a pioneer. I'm a pioneer. Nobody ever got old in this goddamn sport until us. And we <laughs> got to figure that out, you know? That's very true. <laughs> you too? Yeah, me too. I think you too <laughs> have yeah. to figure it out. We, we, were, we were saying that just, <laughs> just earlier. And we're going to yeah. figure it out. Yeah, I'm going to listen to you. Because it's a mindset. And it's an attitude, and you don't have to be in a box. Yeah, I think I, I use this example. It probably suits American culture a little bit better. Um, but if you, you know, if you go outside and, and you play catch with your dad, you don't you don't call yourself a baseball player. But if you go snowboarding on the weekends, you are a snowboarder. And you know, it's just not confined to a, a label. There's there's creativity and. And individuality and authenticity, I think, that run through our sport that really, you know, at whatever level, entry level, um, whether you've been doing it for a few years, um, you know, it's it's <laughs> just a, an incredible sport that is so unique that... Uh, I always say, like, my kids don't do the same sport I do with the rails and the <laughs> Which is great. Yeah, exactly. She she doesn't do the same. I want to, I really want to. She's still going to go ride the car again. Really, Black, what I'm sweet. trying for my dream is for somebody to cut me into Kelly. Like, we're wearing the same we outfit. We want to dress the same for the US and Open. And I look like I'm going into the <laughs> half pipe and then it's Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we should do it at the US Open. I'll, I'll, I'll poach the men's event in, and in your outfit. Like, it's Donna. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> that is quite a mental image. Uh, um, I'm sure it can be arranged, though, right? Uh, but, you know, you, you, what you're talking about, you, 
you've been challenging yourself in the same way off the board you know you've been the book the public speaking that you've been doing you know it's all part of the same thing isn't it it's just a way of progressing public speaking is a lot like competing you like prepare and execute and hope it goes okay (laughs) yeah which is more never don't get nervous (laughs) which is more nerve wracking (laughs) Uh, public speaking is much <laughs> less familiar, although it's it's becoming more and more common. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I mean, feel even more comfortable doing a 1080. Yeah, right. Yeah, than yeah, than yeah me speaking too. Yeah. In public. Uh, even after all the years of competing, <laughs> I never once lost the butterflies. Never once did I not really? get nervous. Y- you always had it. Always had it. All yeah. the, all the way until X Games last week with for my run my last run that didn't even really matter. Still had the butterflies. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That's probably like a healthy thing, right? Yeah, I guess it meant, meant I, I still cared, I guess. Yeah, right. Well, I reckon we should take some, some questions. Um, I've got one from uh, Facebook, which is, is a good one. Who did the artwork for the board? Who did the Peregrine Falcon? Um, my friend, whose name is also Kelly. Um, you can check her out on Instagram, art by Kel. By Kel. I think it's with uh, periods in between, art dot by dot Kel. Um, and she's a watercolor artist out of Santa Barbara. And... Uh, When this opportunity came up, I contacted her and said, hey, I'm working on this project. Uh, Would you be interested in um, submitting some art for it? And um, it was cool. A lot of her art, uh, she lives at the ocean, obviously, and a lot of her art was um, kind of ocean and sea life based. And so, but it's all inspired by the outdoors. Yeah, very much so. And so, she got super creative and submitted some incredible art. And this board, we we just wanted it to be the most beautiful, <laughs> striking board, and I think um, she more than delivered. I'm and so happy with it. And the Peregrine Falcon is beautiful, but fast. Fastest bird in the world, I believe. It's the fastest yeah. animal, animal on the planet. Okay, I got one more. I'm going to take it from Instagram. Um, really? Last one. <laughs> it's like a story or it's just on your a story. Post. Just, it's just a story i'm yeah. trying to figure we'll out how to do we're working on it okay yeah. one more time we're um, working on it yeah <laughs> so uh, this is from Rafarina. <laughs> who are your personal icons inside and outside of the snowboard scene tom brady q for you tom brady oh, no you're not gonna say tom brady <laughs> you're <laughs> not <laughs> gonna say tom brady i, I might, stayed I'm up way past my bedtime <laughs> last night i'll leave it at that <laughs> um you know those women that I mentioned in the film, huge inspirations to me. Uh, I was actually telling Donna earlier, um, the day before I left to come here, I actually got a phone call from Ross Powers, and he won the Olympics the same year I did in 2002, and um, he just called to congratulate me on such a such a good career and everything after this last week's announcement, and uh, I just got to thank him for showing me what it looked like to handle success well. Uh, the dude was the best snowboarder out there and he was the most humble guy you ever met still is and uh he really was my example and showed me how to navigate um a high level of success in an industry that didn't need anybody thinking they were amazing and so uh it was actually really amazing that he really inspired me um he came from a small town in vermont just like me uh when i saw him and shannon win uh, bronze medals in Nagano. That was when I said, "This is the dream that I wanted. That I want to dream." And um, to get to do that with him for a number of years growing up, Great and freedom. to see the example, and gosh, to get the phone call, see my phone ring, you know, the day before I left to come here, I was just like, "This, this guy is legit. That's exactly who he is." And a uh, huge uh, inspiration for me. That's great. Great story. How about you, Donna? I would really have to say my first real hero was Nicola Toast. Who I interviewed last night. Yeah, yeah. let's give it up for Nicola. Yeah, who can and make it she tonight, was fucking badass, right? She's and a legend. She, yeah, she's a legend. And she was the first woman where I really said, wow. You know, not only in terms of the Olympics, which, again, were sort of a double-edged sword, but it was really about, like, I, I was fanned out on her first sick board. I, like, had her <laughs> first sick board. Back-to-back back sevens? Yeah, She was incredible. Yeah, first she Olympic. was incredible. First Olympic and gold. she's still committed to the sport, so she's my badass. She showed hero. up at the European Open a few years ago and made finals. I was, like, fanning yeah. out. Was yeah, like we're all fanning out. Kelly and I are, like, I wish I could show out. up in, like, yeah. 10 years and make a final. Yeah. I don't think so that's going to happen. So she really, I mean, as far as the first gold 
And again, not that it's all about competitive writing, but it, then it was. And for her st for, to be the first gold medalist was such an pioneer. example in power yes, and power. such a pioneer. Use, like, real pioneer. And, but but yeah. just the love for the sport. And again, the love for it wasn't about being in the Olympics. It was about progressing women's snowboarding to the next level. Well, she was two hours late for the interview yesterday because she was riding powder. So we forgive so, you know, her. We yeah. forgive her. She sent me she a picture can ride of powder. Yeah. So <laughs> fair enough, she's still living it. Um, one more from the floor, and I think we maybe any more. There we go. Um, you said you measured your life and success in four-year increments. There's obviously going to be like a, a void now. <laughs> and that like adrenaline itch, although you're not, you've obviously got other things you're doing with your life. Is there something which will sort of take that place, which uh, the spotlight gives you? Um, you know, I'm not in a hurry to fill that void. Um, it's been such a constant for so many years in my life. Um, I've been so just consumed by this one thing that I feel like I know how to take a, a goal and a dream and go do it. That's that's something that snowboarding's given me. And I could take something else and I could go do it for the sake People of doing said, it. People said, are you crazy? Are you really crazy? You're going to do this for a living. So, right? I mean, there was no path. There was no um, role model. Yeah, it wasn't a thing, yeah. Yeah, and... So uh, I'm not in a hurry to fill that. So uh, I don't want to do something just to do it. Um, I want to find something that, you know, is uh, I'm as passionate about and as impactful um, moving forward. And I, I'm grateful that I still get to be involved in the sport in the and meantime, industry that I love. Backcountry and ball face doesn't yeah. suck. Nope, not one bit. So I'll continue <laughs> to do what I'm doing, and uh, I'm kind of just saying yes to things. I'm saying she yes is. to things to stretch myself <laughs> out of my comfort zone, but come to Munich. I'm yes. not signing up for <laughs> for any uh, huge lifestyle changes at the moment to to fill that void because that void is you can you can fill a void with with work and passion and vision, um, but just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. So I'm kind of just pacing myself at the moment. Great. Uh, well, we're going to wrap it there. So thanks, guys. Um, so the night's not over. There's there's free beer. There's food. Um, <laughs> I'm definitely gonna have a beer. Uh, yeah, I like. You we're deserve just gonna, it, Matt. Good job. Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, we're just all gonna be hanging out, right? So, yeah. Um, so yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you, guys.